Hi, Matt Casey here, data science content lead with Snorkel AI, and I'm here with Algus, also with Snorkel AI. Algus, could you introduce yourself a little bit further? Hey, everybody. Algus Kessnunas. I'm a senior uh, machine learning solutions engineer at Snorkel, uh, primarily focused on working with a lot of our financial services customers um, in uh, co solutioning using the Snorkel Flow platform. We're here today to do a little walkthrough of the new Foundation Model First Document Intelligence Workflow. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be walking through uh, just like kind of one iteration uh, or one development loop in Snorkel, uh, leveraging the new prompting uh, workflow for PDFs. Where do we start? I'm going to show some work that we've done with a top 10 U.S. bank where they wanted to build out a specialist model that was really well trained to extract out interest rate derivatives out of financial documents. So what I've loaded in Snorkel here are 10Ks, uh, financial statements put out by various publicly traded uh, corporations. And one of the holdings that they might have are interest rate derivatives. So what we want to do is teach a model to understand these very specific line items that sometimes occur in tables and sometimes occur kind of in the text of the 10K. So we want to kind of make sure that this model is extracting these entities uh, from various portions of the document. A natural way to start is just asking a large language model to see what it understands and see how well it can identify interest rate derivatives. And I'm going to do that using the new prompting workflow in Snorkel Flow. And I'm going to go into our prompts tab where I'm able to connect to multiple large language models or foundation models. Today I've connected to GPT-4 as well as the layout LM model um, from Microsoft. Let me ask the uh, chat GPT-4 model uh, to extract out interest rate swap notional amounts um, from my documents. I can preview this prompt in Snorkel uh, on a small subset of data, and I can start to understand how well is this prompt performing at the specific task that I've instructed the large language model. What Snorkel tells me is that this particular uh, prompt is able to respond at an accuracy um, or precision of 67%, and it's able to cover a fraction of 1% of my data. This is because I'm asking a very specific question to just identify um, the portions of my document that indicate uh, that a particular entity is an interest rate swap. Snorkel allows me to take a look at when this prompt is performing uh, or where this prompt is performing correctly or incorrectly. Let's take a look at an example where the prompt is performing uh, correctly so I can sandy check uh, the output of this prompt. That box there, that is what we're looking at as a labeled example? That is correct. So what we can see here is just sanity checking this prompt um, is actually identifying some positive uh, mentions of an interest rate swap, right? We can see uh, it says interest rate derivative, and the large language model correctly infers that this is a interest rate swap. I'm fairly satisfied with the performance of this prompt, and I can go and create uh, this prompt. And what Snorkel does, uh, does something clever. It packages up the output of this prompt as a programmatic labeling function in Snorkel. Snorkel is able to run this prompt across my entire data set and kind of package up the responses as a programmatic labeling function. So we're looking at this one box here that is an example on one document, but this is applying to all the documents at once. Yeah, exactly. It's applying across all the documents. And the other really cool thing is that Snorkel is actually able to take uh, this prompt as well as another prompt, apply it across the entire data set, and denoise this programmatic labeling function. And what that means is that it starts to apply the labeling function only on data points uh, where it's confident enough uh, that it's going to correctly start to label uh, the entity as an interest rate swap. And what we can see here is that Snorkel has actually gone through and started to label about 276 entities uh, within our particular documents. So we're seeing 276. How many were expected in this document? Do we know? There are you know, potentially thousands of entities that we could label uh, within, within these documents. So we have this one labeling function that seems to be doing a pretty good job, but I see that our coverage is not as high as we want. So what happens next? We have this particular uh, labeling function, the output of the prompt that's going and starting to label some of our interest rate swaps. We also have this other labeling function that's actually pretty good. It's starting to identify uh, concepts like liabilities and debts. So what we can do is ask Snorkel to programmatically label our data set, and we can train a model. Uh, this model is going to essentially form uh, or, or work as a compass. It's going to point us uh, in the direction where we have additional room for improvement. And to do that, uh, what we can do is train a model in Snorkel. Uh, we could fully customize the model architecture that we want to use, the inputs that are going into the model, um, or you know, fully customize the way we're vectorizing our text. 
Um, or you could just treat Snorkel as a push button way to kind of quickly train a model. And what Snorkel is actually going to do, it's going to go and programmatically label our data set and train a model for us. I've already trained a model here, and we could take a look at the performance of the model that's already trained. And what we can see is that uh, Snorkel, by programmatically labeling our data set using the outputs of those two prompts, is able to train a model that's performing at 60 on an F1 score. However, this is nowhere close to being ready to push into production. So can you show me how we would find a specific error mode and then go about correcting it? Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, I like to think about this model that's being trained kind of as the compass. Um, and Snorkel uh, opens up a lot of different error analysis tools uh, that you can use to identify those error modes and also some strong recommendations of how to make those corrections. A interesting one to point out here is this concept of a clarity matrix. And the clarity matrix shows us where we have uh, potential data errors as well as model errors. And really critically, where those data errors resolve uh, result in model errors. For example, this one subset of the clarity matrix points us towards subsets of our data where Snorkel was not able to label various entities correctly because it just doesn't have enough information. So Snorkel is basically telling us, hey, take a look at these couple error modes and provide me more information of how to interpret particular entities. So I can click into these and Snorkel auto filters my data to this error mode. And what I could see here is that Snorkel has not been able to identify, or the model trained in Snorkel has not been able to identify these four particular line items correctly as interest rate swaps. But for me as a human, it's really easy to realize that these are interest rate derivatives. It says interest rate derivatives, it says interest rate swaps, and it also says fix the variable, which I know applies specifically to these particular derivatives. So to resolve this error mode, what I want to do is fix this using a corrective uh, programmatic labeling function. And what I could do is basically just tell Snorkel very directly, hey, when you see interest rate swap, interest rate derivative, or fix the variable, I'm just going to auto-populate this really quickly, uh, you should identify this as an interest rate swap. And I write this as a programmatic labeling function. So Snorkel is going to essentially look for patterns in line with uh, these particular entities, and we'll try to label uh, using this additional signal that I'm writing. And in the same way with uh, as I wrote my prompt labeling functions, I could also look at the precision and coverage of these uh, kind of corrective labeling functions as well, or pattern-based labeling functions. And what I see is that it's, it's not perfect. It's about 87% precise, but it covers about 2.6% of my data. It'll combine this with the other labeling functions that have been written uh, once it's done processing it, and will relabel my entire data set. What I'm able to do then is take the relabeled data set and train a new model. We'll see that Snorkel will populate the statistics once it's done applying this across the, my entire corpus of data. And I could go and train a new model in Snorkel. When we saw those, those points that Snorkel wasn't labeling, those came from the ground truth, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's perfectly correct. Our kind of uh, uh, approach is use a small amount of manually labeled or expertly labeled ground truths to validate our development. Uh, to validate the model performance as well as the performance of our labeling functions. But we should train our model over programmatically labeled data. That allows us to now have a kind of a, a system that scales across our entire data set, uh, but is also auditable and adaptable over time. So it looks like that last labeling function went in. What what now? Snorkel has more than doubled our the size of our uh, training set, as we can see up here. And we could go now train a second model in Snorkel. Um, I can call this now like something like model two, so that we're not waiting. I've already trained the second model for us on the updated data. And what we could see now is that Snorkel is able to kind of improve the performance uh, for this specific task now to 82 um, or 83 on an F1 score. Uh, this is really powerful. And why Snorkel is able to do this is because it pointed us towards a particular error mode. Uh, we fixed the error mode, not by manually kind of labeling a couple more data points, but by providing a labeling function that applies across the entire data set, meaning that the model is now able to learn from a multitude of signal uh, and is able to kind of correct that error mode on the second model. And what we would do next is basically rinse, lather, repeat. But we can take a look at the error uh, modes that still exist, and we could go to refine them. And, and every single iteration in Snorkel, uh, we're basically going to do that. We're going to provide kind of additional signal through a programmatic labeling function, relabel our data set, train a new model, and identify those errors. So that's the loop, and you just continue the loop until you hit 
your target metric and, and then you deploy it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Typically kind of at the last mile, uh, you might want to kind of pull in maybe an SME to help you understand maybe like those more complex error modes. We might iterate a couple more times, uh, resolve the remaining error modes. And then when we're happy with the performance of the model, we can either export the programmatically labeled data set, or we can export the model that was trained in Snorkel. Thank you for walking us through the workflow of FM First Document Intelligence. Well, Algus, thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you.